So the agenda for tonight, uh, history of the Daxon. Then we will speak about the CKC genetic and medical committee opinions. Um, then discussion on health and preservation of the Daxon. And then question and uh, on the presentation and the post webinars. So history. Okay, so hi, I'm Sherry Wise. I'm the director of operations at CKC. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, okay, so I just wanted, I, most of you all, you probably all know this, but I wanted to bring it back to light, um, some history of the Dachshund. So we all know that this, the Dachshund originated in Germany, and the VG, VD, VDH registers as one breed with varieties, with coats and sizes. Uh, we have an internal uh, working group at the CKC. We've been working uh, through some of these issues. So uh, we, we did check and we, we have looked at some of the history, et cetera, to get, get, gather all this information to work through these, these sessions. So the AKC and the Kennel Club and FCI recognize it all as one breed with varieties. Canada is the only exception and the only breed treated differently. So Agriculture Canada recognizes the breed as one breed, the Dachshund, okay? But in our policies, there's special regulations. Um, it's approved by the CKC Board of Directors um, allowing that each, each Dachshund coat size is registered separately and no interbreeding allowed. So that's the, the current state. Also in the policies, it allows for foreign importations that allow interbreeding. Those are accepted to be registered by CKC. Also wanted to mention that the health and preservation of the breed has no impact on showing and confirmation. This is strictly regarding registration and registration only and how the breed is represented at the CKC. As you can read pretty much what we discussed, as Sherry mentioned before, the, um, the CKC differs from other kennel clubs in recognizing the um, six different breeds rather than varieties. And when we talked about it, I think we discussed the health and welfare of the breed. That was the perspective that we came from. And I know it's important to come up with recommendations that do not impact the confirmation on how Daxons will be represented. Now, do I get to change things? Okay. Now, health and demography. <clears throat> we have some data from the last three years, and uh, Jet's Jeff has embarrassed me by doing a correct adding of the number of litters and revealing that I can't add using a little calculator. So it's over approximately 250 Daxon litters whelped annually over the past three years. But the point is that miniature long hair and miniature smooth were by far the most num numerous uh, litters. And the number of um, miniature wire hairs and the three standard litters is concerning from a genetics point of view because low numbers can restrict gene flow and increase what's known as genetic drift where just by the fact that so few get bred, um, some genes are lost. And Daxon breeders appear to recognize this. Um, about 45% of litters have foreign sires. And then I remembered that in my own breeding program, we have foreign dams. So if we had included those, I think that probably at least 50% of all litters um, have sires or dams from countries where Daxons would be recognized as different varieties of one breed. I'm going to next one. Um, there are no negative impacts on health and well being by having one breed. Um, and we do actually see already um, with the current use and import of foreign dogs that recessive gene coat genes do pop up. Um, smooth to smooth can give long hairs. Uh, wire to wires can give long hairs or um, smooths. And just recognizing that these dogs have potentially been interbred and by using them, um, no way forces any breeder to do this, they still can 
do them separately or together or whatever they want, but it gives us the option for a group of small numbers to and aligns us with the majority of kennel clubs. And that is the end of our recommendations. I will be available when we discuss breed health because the breed health strategies was part of the work of the Genetics and Medical Committee. Thank you, Roberta. So we will start with the um, Alberta Dachshund Club, Giselle. If it's in order. All right, so we have 17 members in the Alberta Dachshund Club. 100% hold for six separate Dachshund breeds. We agree that our six separate Dachshund breeds share similar form and function, but the structure is visibly different between the six breeds, especially between the miniature and the standard breeds. Standards being bred to go after badgers and miniatures being bred to go after rabbits and foxes. The structure of each breed was carefully crafted to allow the dog to do his job underground and each prey had different types of burrows and thus each breed's structure was bred specifically for that prey. We want to keep the unique characteristics true to each breed and that each breed came into the registry with the coats, colors and patterns that are inherent in that breed because of the different breeds of dogs used to produce that desired coat. Health issues are different with each breed and interbreeding between the six separate dachshund breeds creates an avenue for the health issues to jump from one breed to the other and also for genes that cause the health issues to mutate and create further health problems in another breed of dachshund. Interbreeding between the sizes will affect the miniature breeds ability to keep their dachshunds within the specified weight limits. The se six separate dachshund breeds need to have breed equity and breed autonomy. Each breed of dachshund was accepted into the CKC breed registry over a 70 year time frame. And as they came into the country, they were given a separate breed designation and not allowed to interbreed between the coats and the sizes. If we are separate breeds, why are these six, six separate breeds not allowed the same rights and privileges of the other 180 or so separate breeds in the CKC registry? And that's what we came up with. <laughs> so I'm done with my 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 <laughs> part of the presentation. <laughs> yeah, that was that was less than five minutes. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm a fast talker, I guess. <laughs> that, that was good. That was clear. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we're going to call on the Daxon Club of Greater Toronto. Vicki, Thomas, you have the floor. We are the Daxon Club of Greater Ontario. That's how you receive our payment for our check. We are not the Daxon Club of Greater Toronto, just for an FYI. Anyway, um, just to give a bit of history, um, I st uh, started out showing dogs at the last... Uh, uh, national specialty that was held by the Dachshund Club of Canada in 1973. Um, my family had a pet standard wire and I bought my first show wire in 79. So I've been in Dachshunds for quite some time. Um, I also bred mini wires for about 10 years. Um, I have been a CKC member since 1979. When I first joined our local Dachshund Club, uh, that was the Eastern Dachshund Club, it was the only one available to us. Uh, so we started our own club because we didn't have one. Um, the Miniature Dachshund Club of Canada existed, but it held no events. Um, my local club has been active in confirmation, obedience, earth dog, and breed seminars. Now I pulled, or our secretary pulled our club members um, to ask about uh, whether they wanted to continue with the registration the way it was, or uh, to have the separation into the different breeds. And uh, we were all in favor of uh, keeping it as is with one exception. One person wanted to have uh, separate breeds and that there was to be no interbreeding. I don't see that there's a problem with interbreeding because quite frankly, 
if I don't want to breed to a smooth, I won't. It, it's, it's not like you're being forced to. Um, the, the Federation was formed to represent all dachshunds uh, for owners and breeders across the country. Um, so again, we feel that this is the way to go. Um, when it comes down to health testing, the only question I had about um, uh, Dr. Parrish's presentation is the statistics that she presented were uh, covering two years during COVID. When I don't know as people were breeding as they normally would, I know I certainly wasn't because of uncertainty with uh, uh, my work and uh, that sort of thing. Um, when it comes to health testing, uh, our club was, is in favor of it, of course, and we would like to see the CKC Institute DNA testing. The CKC, is uh, their job is to uh, um, have a, a proven stud book, and, and we feel that uh, puppy people are, are entitled to this, and it would be a, a, a big asset. Thank you. Um, now will be um, Julie Starling from the Eastern Canada Dachshund Club. Uh, good evening to the panel of the CKC, members of the various Dachshund Clubs, and last but not least, the members of the Dachshund Fancy. My name is Julie Starling, and I'm a member in good standing with the Canadian Kennel Club, as well as the first vice president of Eastern Canada Dachshund Club of Canada, or the ECDC. I've been a member of the CKC since 2008, and I've been actively involved in showing and breeding of golden retrievers for the last 16 years, as well as miniature long-haired dachshunds for the last five years. I've been nominated to speak on behalf of the ECDC. The ECDC is a regional club that was formed in 1976, and the views expressed in my presentation are supported by the over 70 Dachshund breeder owner handlers of the ECDC who reside in Atlantic, Canada, Quebec, and Eastern Ontario. We have been invited here this evening to have a discussion on health and preservation of the dachshund. And the discussion will be around whether dachshund should, be con should continue to be viewed as one breed, six varieties, as it is now, or six separate breeds as the best way to preserve the breed. We suggest that the problem may be in the terminology, breed versus variety. That, and there may be an assumption that if we refer to the different sizes and coat types as varieties, that automatically opens the door to interbreeding. I strongly believe, as well as the executive, the board members, and the members of the ECDC, that dachshund should remain one breed, six varieties with one breed standard that describes all six. To be certain that my re remarks truly reflect the views of the ECDC members, we conducted an online survey over the past few weeks and asked our members if they wanted dachshunds to remain as one breed with six varieties and whether they were in favor or opposed to interbreeding. When the survey was ended, we had 94% who wanted, who want the CKC to keep things as they are, one breed with six varieties, and 98% were opposed to interbreeding. Some people have suggested that interbreeding will lead to the introduction of inheritable diseases that did not previously ex exist in the six dachshund varieties. We believe that the best way to prevent the transmission of inheritable diseases is through health testing and eliminating some affected dogs from your breeding program. While there may be some benefits to interbreeding, such as improving structure, and it is practiced in some other countries, if you aren't health testing, then you are taking a gamble with your future litters. We believe that DNA health testing is a crucial step for our breed and should be top priority for any ethical breeder. If we separate dachshunds into separate breeds with their own breed standards, it will render the Canadian dachshund fancy to be out of step with the rest of the world. From a historical perspective, it has been the long position that the dachshund breed clubs around the world 
that all dachshunds have the same structure and are only divided by size and coat type and described by a singular breed standard. Also, it will be very difficult for some of the breeds to form national breed clubs and have the ability to hold specialties, which would also be very cha challenging, simply because we won't have enough numbers in Canada to create separate breed clubs. ECDC has always viewed the Federation of Dachshund Clubs in Canada as the national club for all dachshunds. In July 2023, the ECDC board wrote the CKC board and the CEO to ask them to work with the Federation on matters affecting our breed. We encourage them to do so again. We support this democratic practices and feel that many breeders and fanciers are currently well represented by the Federation. We firmly believe that the Federation should remain the singular voice for dachshunds in our country. We would ask that the Canadian Kennel Club Board and staff continue to recognize the Federation of Dachshund Clubs of Canada as the national breed club for dachshunds in our country. I want to thank the CKC for allowing the ECDC to participate in this very important discussion and allow us to provide our club's position. Again, the ECDC's position is that dachshunds should remain one breed, six varieties with one breed standard. That describes all six. Thank you. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, now it will be Janet uh, Rain from the Federation of Dachshund Clubs of Canada. Janet. All right. Hi. My family Hi. has a long history in Dachshunds in both miniature and standard since the 1980s. Over the years, I have been a volunteer club officer, a show secretary for confirmation, rally, obedience, and earth dog. I have worked hard to fundraise for many clubs. Out of 18 litters, my prefix has 48 homebred champions in three coats, best in show, multiple best in shows, multiple best in specialty winners in three different countries, a Crufts winner and several Westminster winners. I talk to many breeders across the country and club reps that pulled their members. The vast majority want things to remain the same as it is now. No, sep no separation, no tea interbreeding. Interbreeding has had its place in the history of Dachshund since the beginning of time. It's still practiced in various countries with most having specific rules. A lot of diseases have already crossed over into the other varieties. We are fortunate we can test. Interbreeding in varieties can be beneficial in some cases. A closed gene pool can, over time, because of a bottlenecking for that breed. If we had to change the regulations to allow interbreeding, those opposed don't have to interbreed. Total separation. Around the world, dachshunds have one breed standard that describes the sizes and the three coat types. To change this model, we would change this model, we would be out of step with the rest of the world. Canadian dachshunds would change and lose tap breed type. But so would the regional clubs have to change from breed specialty clubs to limited group clubs offering four group placements and instead of a dachshund specialty. To lose so many specialties for dachshunds across the country for one national specialty in each of the varieties held somewhere in Canada is a huge loss to us all. We are better together. Here are several worthy things we could be working on. CFIA regulations. Let's work on getting an improvement on the CFIA regulations. Importing new bloodlines is vital for a healthy breed population. The grand champion excellent. I ask the Dachshund community, let's work together and lobby the CKC to have our national specialty count for top dog and grand champion points. This is long overdue. Breed standard. We can be working right now on making improvements on our breed standard and have it ready for a vote in January 25, just 10 months away. This makes more sense to update the breed standard to get the changes people want, time better spent in understanding each other and working together in the coming months. Breed, ed breed education, work together, develop breeder education and mentoring new people in the breed, provides pr prospective puppy buyers with a co 
with the tools to find well-bred, healthy puppies through public education, DNA and health testing. The Federation fully supports the DNA and recommended health testing proposed by the CKC and is eager to collaborate with them to promote this initiative. DNA testing is crucial for our breed and should be the top priority for any ethical breeder. Communications. On January 15, 2001, Federation of Dachshund Clubs of Canada was approved as a national club for all Dachshunds. It has worked with various CKC boards and CEOs over the years. Since 2018, a lot of misinformation has been passed off as truth and has caused a rift in the Dachshund community, putting pity miniature breeders against the standard breeders. Those that are behind this are focused on one thing that is self-serving and not for the Dachshund breed as a whole. The CKC has chosen to listen to the misinformation and has never verified things with the Federation, nor has it given the people that have been trashed an opportunity to prove it wrong. The CKC must start to communicate with the National Club directly instead of only a couple of people that are constantly in their ear. The National Club has asked to meet the CKC several times in the past year, which has been met with silence, denying our membership a voice. A lot of confusion over the language in recent mail outs and the survey last year leave could have been so avoided hey, with more clarity. I will close here and ask that the CKC to consult with the National Club for any future surveys so we can all be on the same page. Thank you. You got it. Uh, um, now, Patricia Taylor from the Manitoba and Northwestern Ontario Dachshund Club. Hello, everybody. Uh, Patricia Taylor. Uh, my intro is I'm an international breed judge, breeding long hairs for 45 years, a CKC life member. I'm a little resentful uh, to all the uh, remarks about varieties in dachshunds. I've done some research on the breed standard, and I would like to quote from some of our breed standards. The original German standard in 1888 combines three types of German dachshunds having a single standard, although each constitutes a separate breed. FCI from 1970, for decades, the dachshund has been bred in three sizes, three coats, each developed for a specific hunting terrain and different prey, and has had a general description followed by details of each type. In UK, Australia, and Canada, the standards still conform to the original breed description of six breeds under one description. The only country kennel club with so-called varieties and not acknowledging the history of the dachshunds is the USA AKC, where the general description is followed by special characteristics of varieties where interbreeding is allowed. Our club does not support that. We wish to remain as it is with the breeds. Indeed, our CKC policies and procedures actually verify the dachshund original history of six breeds. In closing, I have input from some of our club members. One is to adhere to our dachshund history. The second one was uh, commenting about a parallel to sporting dogs like setters, spaniels, retrievers, who have their own national club. And also another one made a suggestion to establish six breed clubs for equal national representation. I believe the thinking behind that was uh, some, some of the um, people did some look onto the CKC litter registrations for 2022. There were 27 standard litters registered and 231 miniatures. There is no way that there is equalization here. Um, I would like to also support the, the CKC DNA testing of our stud dogs. The AKC has been doing this for years. This is a very good thing to get in place if we can possibly do it. Most of us do our, our health testing for each one of our breeds. And I have to say here, that having PRA in the miniature long hairs, I would really dislike to see that uh, interbred into any of the standards. There are reasons that we keep to our breed. On behalf of the Manitoba Northwestern Ontario Dachshund Club, 
After a poll was done of all our members, our view is to always preserve the history of the breeds with the one description, the six breeds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I'll Darren Petit from the Miniature Dachshund Club of British Columbia. Darren Pettit here. Thank you for the invitation to represent the Miniature Dachshund Club of British Columbia. Our club also thanks you as this is the first time in over 20 years our club has been brought into a formal discussion on Dachshund matters with the CKC and other Dachshund clubs save for when Pat Taylor was FDCC president and included us once at that time in a discussion. Before I go any further, I'd like to share two quotes. First one is, prejudice is a great time saver. You can form opinions without having to gather any facts. And people are entitled to their own opinions, but they are not entitled to their own facts. At our last MDCBC club meeting, with respect to preservation and the health of the breeds, all in attendance were in favor of and supported the Dachshund as six separate breeds. We agreed in order to go forward, we must have breed equity and breed autonomy. This could be achieved by each breed having their own ROE, their own breed standard. We agreed that some of the miniature Dachshund breeds have specific health issues that are specific to their breed. To preserve the Dachshund breeds in Canada, we must adhere to the CKC policy by which we are legislating. In Canada, there is only one place in CKC policy where the Dachshund is referred to as a single breed, and that is in CKC policy, Chapter 4, Section 9, under Dachshund. There is not even a place in the official CKC Dachshund breed standard that says the Dachshund is one breed. In fact, under the heading special characteristics of the Dachshund, it says Dachshunds in Canada are six separate breeds connected by structure and general appearance and distinguished by size, standard or miniature and coat type, smooth, long haired or wire haired. CKC bylaws section 24.1 under recognized breeds lists only four breeds with an asterisk behind them at the end of the list. It denotes that those with the asterisk are subject to special regulations. Section 24.2 under the heading special regulation lists the Belgian shepherd dogs, the Chihuahua, the Collies and the Dachshunds and directs the reader to CKC policy. In policy, it says the Chihuahua, the Collies and the Belgian shepherds are each referred to as single breeds with varieties which can interbreed. The Dachshund is the only one referred to as a single breed for importation from other countries that can interbreed. However, is to be treated as six separate breeds for everything else other than importation. And they are not allowed to interbreed. The Miniature Dachshund Club of BC does not support the Federation of Dachshund Clubs as the national parent club. If one reads the literature distributed by Pat Taylor and Harry Simmons that explained the original purpose, they'll see that the intention was never to become the parent club. Parent clubs of individual membership will better preserve and address the health of the various Dachshund breeds. Many of the non-represented CKC registered Dachshund breeders refused to join the six existing FDCC clubs because they did not agree with the manner in which the Federation operates. They have, however, expressed in interest in individual Dachshund breed parent clubs with individual membership. If we look at the data, all CKC registered parent clubs, we'll find the majority have individual membership. I did speak to Ian Seth, who used to be one of the chair of the UK Dachshund Breed Council, that is a club of club structure. He uh, mentioned that it is... <laughs> a better structure and commented some of their challenges and the fact that recently just they have just had two clubs resign. There was no member of Miniature Dachshund Club who could not, oh, there was one member of the Miniature Dachshund Club BC who could not make our last meeting, yet reached out to share her input. Uh, she believes in genetic diversity and believes we should maintain the piebald Dachshund. She also believes we should be one breed with uh, six varieties that allows interbreeding in order to add to our limited gene pool. The Miniature Dachshund Club of BC 
Kaczynski did discuss the interbreeding and felt the varieties, uh, the various health issues of the miniature breeds interbreeding was too great, especially regarding health issues that have no genetic testing available. Miniature Dachshund Club BC believes uh, we can safely breed and should be able to exhibit all colors and patterns because of DNA testing now available. In closing, it is important that we go forward with the evidence-based facts and research that can better serve the health and preservation of the six Dachshund breeds that have always existed since their importation into Canada. And again, I quote, people are entitled to their own opinions. However, they are not entitled to their own facts. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, now will be Cindy Alexander from the Prairie Dachshund Club. Thank you. Well, over the last 50 years, as a life member of CKC, I have been involved with all varieties of Dachshunds in the capacity of owner, breeder, handler, groomer, and judge. The consensus of the members of the PDC is for everything to stay as it is, with one Dachshund breed, one breed standard with six varieties to show size and coat, preferably with no interbreeding. Genetically, Dachshunds are not separate breeds. They differ in only one allele, and that is for coat. Any geneticist would agree it is one breed. They differ in size because of selective breeding to suit a purpose. The construction of a dachshund is exactly the same for every one. They differ slightly only in coat and size, which was to assist hunting a variety of prey in different terrains. Nowhere in the world today are dachshund varieties considered their own breed. Our club feels approving each style of Dachshund to stand alone as a breed, form its own club and hold its own standard is not in the best interest of breed preservation. We would potentially see drastic changes in every variety of Dachshund until they no longer resemble the original standard or each other. This would be a very detrimental decision and affect the quality of Dachshunds being produced. Because of low numbers of some breeders and dogs in some varieties, individual standards could conceivably be held and changed at the whim of five or six people. This is not acceptable or respectful to our breed. This could also cause other countries and registries to question the integrity and validity of our pedigrees and not accept them. All changes to the standards that have been made over the years have been collectively worked on and decided on by all Dachshund breeders with very careful consideration of the impact on the breed and to improve the quality, type and health of the entire breed. Standards were made to be the blueprint of a breed for breeders, breeders to follow and adhere to, not to be changed to suit who is breeding at the time. In Canada, keeping the varieties as they are now, if we ever need to breed out for diversity like the Dalmatian did, we can fortunately draw from our own breed. The UK also does not allow interbreeding. They do, however, allow it to be applied for with good reason and the Dachshund Council will determine whether it is useful and if it should go forward. A few have been approved. We could achieve some genetic diversity perhaps in the same way with special permission requiring health tests for diseases such as Lephora that could be transferred. If it's decided to allow interbreeding as it can offer some genetic relief and revitalizing, there is nothing to say everyone must do it. And hopefully anyone partic uh, partaking in the practice would do so carefully as it can also produce undesirable in between coats and sizes. Uh, we believe the intent and wording of the CKC bylaws regarding the Dachshund is being misunderstood. It says quite plainly, the CKC recognizes the Dachshund as a single breed subject to special regulations for registration purposes. This is to accommodate imported Dachshunds that may have crossed varieties. It goes on to say in part A, for all practical purposes, registration and events, they will be treated as six different breeds treated as separate breeds, not are separate breeds. If I said I will treat you like a princess, it doesn't mean you are a princess. Other kennel clubs don't even address whether to call them breeds or varieties, as many have grappled with this over the years. They just describe each Dachshund coat and size under the collective heading of Dachshund. 
We feel that one evening of five minute speeches is not nearly adequate to discuss this effectively. It appears it has come about because of some dissatisfaction with the FDCC and the vote that took place for the last standard revision. It is unreasonable to change the entire breed for this when we could just revise and repair club issues and the standard can be revisited in 2025. Um, we all must put our personal agendas aside and work together with cool heads to protect, promote and preserve all Dachshunds and their structure, breed, type, health and hunting instinct. This is what truly dedicated breeders do. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Um, and now our last spoke person, uh, Shannon uh, Charron from the Western Dachshund Club. Um, in preparation for this webinar, I polled the members of the Western Dachshund Club and 10 of our 16 members responded. 100% of respondents indicated that they view the Dachshund as one breed, six varieties, and are not in favor of interbreeding between varieties. The club does not wish for six separate breed standards or six national clubs. Regardless of the number of varieties in each system around the world, the Dachshund is recognized as a single breed under one standard. With respect to federal and club legislation, Agricultural Canada recognizes the Dachshund as a single breed and does not differentiate between size and coat, which is the same way that it lists the Poodle, the Chihuahua, and the Collie. This is in contrast to the Bull Terrier and the Miniature Bull Terrier, which have separate breed standards and are separate breeds. The CKC updated its special regulations for dachshunds following recommendations in June 20, 2007 from the FDCC, which was intended to remove undue hardship for miniature breeders when importing dogs from other countries. CKC Policy and Procedures Chapter 4, Section 9A states that to allow for the importation of dogs from foreign jurisdictions that allow interbreeding, the CKC bylaws recognize dachshunds as a single breed, subject to special regulations for registration. For all practical purposes, i.e. for both registration and participation in events, dachshunds will be treated as six separate breeds defined by the two sizes and three coat varieties. Interbreeding is not permitted. The abbreviation IE stands for the Latin phrase it est, which means to provide clarification or precise information. It tends to narrow down the number of options, not increase. We're talking about practical purposes here and not abstract concepts. Registration and events are the only two instances where CKC treats dachshunds as separate. This does not apply to breed standards or national clubs. Furthermore, Chapter 4, Section 9b states the breed, singular, will be identified by CKC certificates of registration by the term dachshund followed by the size and coat variety in parentheses. This practice is no different from chihuahuas, poodles, or collies. They're single breeds with varieties that show separately, with each variety advancing to group, and when registered, must indicate the variety of which they most closely conform. In the Western Dachshund Club's view, the CKC is complying with their bylaws and the way that Agriculture Canada recognizes the Dachshund as one breed. With respect to national clubs and breed standards, those proposing separation have not demonstrated how creating six breed standards with even fewer checks and balances contributes to the preservation of the Dachshund. Will each hypothetical national club be required to consult with the other five each time that they desire to change their breed standards? If yes, then what's the point of splitting? If no, then what methods will be enforced to ensure that dachshunds continue to be connected by structure? How long will it be before a miniature smooth no longer resembles the standard wire? And how long will it be before the upper limit of a miniature matches that of a small standard? And what is the fate of recessive coats? Can one breed weld another in a single generation? Having a single national club with a larger voice and a larger input ensures the docks and varieties will not deviate from each other. And the FDCC has been the national club since 2001. Moving on, the issue of the CKC not, not recognizing a best of breed win at the national docks and specialty as meeting the criteria for a grand champion excellent title highlights discrepancies within CKC. For example, poodles are a single breed with three varieties and they compete in two different groups. At their national specialty, there's a best of breed for each size and a best in specialty show, which is exactly how dachshunds run their national specialty. And yet, the best of breed qualifies that poodle for their grand champion excellent title, which is not the case for dachshunds. This demonstrates that separating dachshunds into six breeds for the chance that one more show will check a box is not an appropriate solution to address inconsistencies within CKC. I don't think that we can address 
uh, the health of the dachshund without addressing intervariety breeding. Anecdotally, the consensus seems to be that dachshund fanciers are not with or are not in favor of intervariety breeding. But intervariety breeding is simply a tool, and like any tool, it requires careful consideration of appropriate application. The issue is not with the tool, it's with the application. You don't trim a bonsai plant with a chainsaw. The CKC has already demonstrated that it views intervariety breeding as an acceptable tool amongst its breeder membership by permitting it in chihuahuas, collies, and Belgian shepherd dogs, and by allowing for the importation of dachshunds from other countries that allow this practice. It certainly has the potential to introduce unexpected health problems or to have undesirable coat colors or patterns, but it also has the potential to improve genetic diversity. And regardless of whether or not interbreeding between size and coat types is permitted, breeders should be taking advantage of the advancements in health testing technology. And one would hope that breeders in Canada would continue to exercise caution and common sense within their programs, never compromising quality for the latest fad. In summary, the dachshund, regardless of size and coat type, is connected by structure. And the CKC bylaws and special regulations align with Agriculture Canada in recognizing the dachshund as a single breed. Those proposing a six breed model have not provided sufficient evidence as to how this would benefit the dachshund long term or how it would be an effective method of breed preservation. Thank you. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Shannon. And I would like to thank all eight speakers as well. Now, next. We are ready for the question and answer. Okay. I think we do have one from David and Tom. Um, if the current registration and standard remains unchanged and we technically have one breed standard, does that mean interbreeding would have to be allowed? So if the current <laughs> registration standard remains unchanged and we technically have one breed standard, does that mean interbreeding would be would have to be allowed. Well, nothing has to be allowed. It's, you know, it's in our policy that right now, as is, we 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 register them separately. They're still one breed. We register them separately and no interbreeding. We can, you know, that policy can be changed at the will of people on the board approving to say interbreeding, but it's not, doesn't mean it has to happen. What are the, so from Sarah Jane Petty, I believe, what are the follow-up steps beyond a survey? A number of points were raised that need to be addressed by the CKC, namely health testing, uh, GCH points, etc. Uh, my interpretation of this is that there is still a lot of work to do to try to get consensus. Um the update will go to the board. So then is on the board and I did see some board members uh, participating as well. Uh, my expectation is that the next board meeting, which is March, we will not have consensus or enough information for the board to be comfortable making a decision and we'll continue the process, um, but it will be a, a board decision. But that would be my interpretation of where we are and this work will continue including the um, the survey to the individuals. Santuga is asking uh, how many national breed clubs exist at the Federation of Clubs? I think Janet can answer this question. There's only one national club and that's the Federation of Dachshund Clubs. Uh, the member clubs are six clubs. Thank you. And, uh, Sherry and, they, will... and, and, and they probably cover about 200 or more members, individual members. Sherry, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the PowerPoint, we had eight speakers because the CKC recognizes eight different Dachshund clubs. That's um, correct. And so yes. each speaker came from one of the eight recognized Dachshund clubs in Canada. Correct, so and then we could have Jerry. also been part of the Federate. I, I believe she just said six are part of the there's six. There's six regional clubs that belong to the Federation, so that's seven. Uh, the BC Miniature Club does not belong to the Federation. Question. Uh, there's a question, how will the survey to individuals be executed, and do you know what you'll be asking? So there'll be um, just a short survey tomorrow um, sent out to all the participants tonight. And it will give you an opportunity to make comments on any of the 
um, presentations that you heard. Um, it, there's just basically a question if you're a breeder or an enthusiast or you're just, uh, you know, an interested party. Um, and if, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. I think there's three questions in there. We're just looking for some comments and a chance for the people in the gallery who couldn't speak and maybe we're not going to get to their questions or haven't thought of a question that they can ask questions or make their comments. We will also be, the the recording will be translated. It may take a, you know, a week or so. And it will be posted on the CKC website. And there will also be a survey for anybody watching the recording that they can feel free to answer as well uh, and respond to the survey. And we'll keep those answers separate so we know these are the, the people who were live and because we have no control over who will be watching the um, the, live, the recorded session. Brenda has a question about um, varieties versus breeds and what will happen. Can uh, coat varieties go to group, uh, which is a, an, a showing uh, question which can be answered once we sort of sort out one breed or six breeds and how that will be. But the, the information about events is down the line and that can happen anyway the Jackson enthusiasts want to have it through their representation so that the, the showing information is not as relevant at this point in the conversation in my opinion um Deborah Glassman is asking so there will be a link we can send to our members can we answer this question Yes, but we'll have to wait. So the sem even though this webinar, we have translators on it, the actual um, webinar needs to be translated. So someone wants to see it in French. So the translation doesn't come up um, on a recording. So we will have our translators translate this recording. We'll all be sending that off to them tomorrow. Uh, I, I can't say exactly when it's going to be out. We're hoping in in about a week we're targeting we're actually targeting for about march 8th to have that up on the website and as i said i'll notify all the club um, that participate all the people that participated tonight and that it's up and we'll put a notification out obviously on our website and probably in our newsletter that it's there and then there'll be a link the link is there to the the, the recording plus there'll be the survey if someone wants to fill that in hope that answers the question Um, Len had a question regarding is it the the debate only one breed versus six breeds or can we meet in the middle potentially two breeds based on I think uh, mini versus standard uh, I think the answer is yes anything is possible at the moment most of the debate has been around either one or six but to Len's question depending on what the breed enthusiasts, uh, if we can reach consensus and have agreement, that's the direction we would like to go, as long as it's for uh, the best interest of the breed. Brenda also had a question about why the FTC was invited um, to speak. Uh, we invited all eight clubs that are registered as Daxon clubs with the CKC, and the FTC C is a Daxon club. Um, and uh, I think their voice at the table, we agreed, was uh, important being one of the eight Daxon clubs. Uh, the final yes. question I have here is, when is the final decision to be made? I don't have an answer for that. That will be up to the board, and my guess is there will still be conversation and uh, trying to uh, find out the best way to move forward to get as much consensus uh, among the group of uh, Daxon enthusiasts. Um, I think we have the question, when is um, the final decision will be made? I think we covered that. It will, the topic will be brought up to the upcoming board meeting for discussion, and then we'll go on from there. But it's, we don't have a specific date as a final decision. 
Well, thank you everyone who has been here tonight with us. Um, as we said, a survey will be sent our um, via SurveyMonkey to all attendees. So, and then we will also provide a link. Um, and for the all the information will be summarized. It will be in both languages, French and English. And um, and then the, the information will also be provided to the board meeting for discussion. I thank everyone. Merci beaucoup à tout le monde. Thank you. Thank Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank good you night. for everybody's participation. Yep. Good night.